All right. This uh this live show is based on uh I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do this proper like Abby Kirst did for um for MTV's to Pasha Cornio uh in in uh, his own words from late nineties. I'm gonna work on this. Slab. It's my last show. I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna do this MTV News style, just like Abby Kirst did. Just like Abby Kirst did with uh, with uh, is with the uh, two partial chords on words from Nice. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you about it. I'm gonna tell you a story about Gregory Edward Jacobs. Gregory Edward Jacobs, who was who was professionally known as Shot G, and by his alter ego Humpty Hump, was an American rapper and musician who was best known as the lead vocalist of the hip hop group The Digital Underground, uh, uh, Oakland rap group. He was responsible for the Humpty Dance song and video. Tupac's breakthrough single, I Get Around, that he was featuring in, along with, uh, with Money B. Uh, 93. And he, co- he co-produced Tupac's, de- Tupac's debut album, Tupac Lips Now. That was, that was released since 1991. No, he had 13 songs, so. That's the same year as uh, Sons of the Peak. So that's the only thing they'll do with Shachi. Not only. Oh, that's a photo of him. That's a photo of him like 16 years later. It's just names. This this is what he's seen him do. We're going through the story, folks. Through the early life. Um uh, Gregory Edwards. Gregory uh J uh, get, I forgot. Gregory Edward Jacobs was born on August 25th, 1963 in New York City. He spent most of his childhood moving around the East Coast with his family. With his family eventually settling settling in Tampa, Florida. As a drummer, he won the 1978 Most Talented Trophy. Uh, yes, what it says, trophy. At Greco Junior High School, but after relocating to Queens, New York. As a result of as a result of his, his parents' divorce, he traded his drums in for a set of turntables. Upon discovering and marveling over hip hop, while the art form was still in an underground developmental stage, he was mentored in the craft by his cousin Rene Negron. Oh, that's so where he guess what uh, the name came from. Well, I'm 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 trying to read this uh TV one unsung wise uh thing. I'm trying to do this TV one thing, do this TV one reading thing. Uh it's cousin Rene Negron, they call him DJ Stretch. And their close friend Sean Trone, they call him MC Shot T. Of the uh the parody rap group No Face, who suggested Greg used the name Sha G. Jacobs liked the idea, but mistakenly thought his friend said Shock G. 
and begin using that in the and then this is what the word is. That's why this is why Google will go uh wordplay like and begin using that name instead after reuniting to Tampa, Florida. After reuniting to Florida, Tampa, Florida, less than two years later, he dropped out of Chamberlain High School to form the Master Blasters, a mobile DJ crew which featured three DJs and four MCs at its height. They performed at parties. And also for the crowds at Riverfront Park, outdoor Sunday gatherings, eventually capturing the interest of Tony Stone, a program director at WTMP radio station. That's right, WTMP radio, which was the city's, the city's primary R&B station. Tony offered Jacobs, who was 16 years old at the time, a job DJing on the air and for a short while as Gregory Racker. That's the alias that he uses. He was the youngest radio personality in Central Florida, Central Florida, with a regular time slot, regular time slot, after being fired for playing the 15 minutes long album version of Not Just Knee Deep by Funkadelic, by Funkadelic. Yeah, George Clinton used to be in that in that group. That was mixed up Parliament and Funkadelic, and they became Parliament Funkadelic. They were the Parliaments in 1956, and then later 1962 they got they signed a deal with with with, uh, with uh, Records, and then they just they did album, they come out with an album called Testifying, and they they, they did a song uh, I want to testify. Uh, out of that record, I was on that record. Uh, 1967. So, later in 1969, 1970, Parliaments and Funkadelic did a show there. Between 1969 and 1970. So, they did a song that, like, that's already out. And then they got tied up with, uh, with Rebel Out Records, you know. And then there's some friction going on with the parliament, with the parliament cigarettes in the in the parliament's name. They try to get the name back, but they, they get ready to change their name with, with a few other band members from uh, from the parliament band. So let me start over. After playing, I forgot. After after being fired for playing the 15 minutes long album version of "Not Just Knee Deep" by Funkadelic in a five in a five minute time slot, and also after tensions with his father escalated, his father escalated. Uh, Jacobs found himself backpacking the United States. Uh, that was the U.S. for for a few years, drifting to odd jobs and petty criminal adventures. Yes, criminal adventures. It was during this excursion that his focus his focus switched switched from from DJing to keyboard playing. And while utilizing piano practice rooms at music stores and colleges to, uh, around the country. He effectively taught himself to play the piano, deciding to pursue music seriously. He returned home quickly, obtained a diploma, and began attending Hillsborough Community College where he studied music theory under Jim Burge and piano under, what was the name? Patricia J. Trice. It was there at HCC that he met and formed in bond, a bond with, with uh, a man named Kenneth Waters. And the two began performing together under various names, various names, under, according, it's including uh, 
the show factor and the four horsemen that's the name the four horsemen that's that's named after that was that that came from a uh a, 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 a professional wrestling stable that came from a professional wrestling stable for the four horsemen uh jj dylan rick flair arn anderson Oli anderson and toy blanchard so the four horsemen that's that, that's like some sort of a, a, of a music group that nobody nobody else even nobody else even heard of which which included mc scooby d and the md dazzling doc p who had recently moved to tampa from the bronx that's where the hip-hop started hip-hop's hip-hop's birthplace then in 1985 after two years of producing local artists for hire local artists for hire playing solo piano gigs around town performing with kenny and being a keyboardist in warren allen brooks band greg and his aspiring girlfriend who used to be uh davita watts set their sights beyond tampa and eloped to Los Angeles, California, in search of greater oppor opportunity, was it greater opportunity? There he played keyboards in Kenny McLeod's pop funk band Onyx before leaving Los Angeles, California, and arriving in in uh, in California's San Francisco Bay Area, California's uh, San Francisco Bay Area where he found work in an Oakland music store and where his group Digital Underground would, would form a few years later. Here's Shock G. Here's Shock G talking about Tupac. In his uh in his interview from uh the 2000 the 2002 documentary Doug Doug Angel. The life of an outlaw is based on the story of Tupac Shakur. Cutting into my fro here. Oh, yeah, that's a little hard. You came back down. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. You see, I started out as a child. That's the unique thing about my uh, past. Just open up a little bit. Work my way to it. Open up. Open up a little bit. <laughs> the struggle continues. <laughs> Damn. It is I, the infamous Jesus, Shock Jesus, aka the fool in zebra print, goer of great places, breather of delicious air, doer of beautiful women. Him, he, I, who gets the most high, on and off stage, raging supreme lunatic in the art of fusing enhanced social activity with groove for mega party squared plus music equals digital underground. And I am the gatekeeper to which you all hold the key.
you sissies. <laughs> Shock Chi, baby. You, they know who I am. Uh -huh. AKA the original Big Nose rapper. Incog. Piano man, baby. Yeah, I was the one. I'm the man who put the piano behind Tupac Shakur. I'm proud of that. Da -da -da -da. I get around. Uh, so many tears. Half his first album. I did all the piano parts on We Are The World. I wrote we, who write the songs. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. You really need to know how? Uh, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good introduction. I'm shot shitty, baby. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I've seen him spit in police officer's face when there was nobody but us three on a dark street in Oakland, you know? Pac almost got us killed in Richmond, Virginia. I know them brothers remember that time they backed us out of this club, this after hours place in Richmond, Virginia, four in the morning. This one cat claimed Pac stepped on his shoe and they got into a little spat. And then it was like, Shh, I'm, I'm gonna see who got the juice and said something disrespectful to Pac. Pac started cursing him out. This whole club turned against us, all black, all ghetto, after hours lounge. 10 minutes later, we're taking pictures and everybody's walking us around. We're all spread out. There's four of us there. Me, Pac, Money B, and Sophia. And uh, Pac challenged this cat and it got ugly. And then Pac was like, yo, man, shot. We out. Yo, we got beef. Uh, we didn't even know what was going on. So we walked over there. Uh, so we all got next to Pac and they were backing us out of the club. Then they backed us out against the brick wall. And at the point, that I was grabbing, holding Pop, trying to get him to shut up. Still putting him in the cab. He was still he's challenging. Still he's still it was like 40 and, and 50 Tupac cats still going to have to fight him. Because they were starting to build up out of clock. Bye, you know. Fuck them California niggas. <laughs> Yo, t Will, I got you, cat. Yeah, yeah, that's you, Mike. Yeah, that's me. What? We'll send him back to Cali, right? And then more and more were ganging up. And Pop was like, what? How y'all gonna do that to me? I'm not scared of none of y'all. I'm not scared of none of y'all. Oh. Sophia was the muscle cat, though. Sophia the muscle. The big said, muscle. Look, yeah, why do we gotta Sophia fight all of y'all? Just me and you box right now. And he challenged the oh, main cat who was challenging Pac. Oh, that while shit. I smushed Pac into the cab. Oh, because the, the more Pac talked, the matter they got. It was a no win situation. And I was can't like, I'm a soldier yeah, too. You cannot win the situation now. There's 40 of them. Oh, and we're from California, there's four of us. Man, and no we're guns. not strapped. Man, no, these people we ain't couldn't got, bring no guns, guns to the guns? club or nothing. They ain't got no that guns. was the beginning of a big feud oh, between Sophia no and Tupac. Because as soon as we got back to the there's hotel, Pac got on the phone. That was one of those outings I told you about when he would just pop up and do a few shows with us. As soon as he got to the phone, he called up uh, Raider. First thing he did was one of Stairs to our bodyguards, and DJ Fuse, and all the people who had guns. Like Fuse, I need your gun. Let me borrow your gun. Yo, we need your gun. We going back, and we gonna show them niggas oh, that they can't no. raise us up like DJ that. DJ Fuse is getting you know? tired of that. Hey, who got the juice? DJ Fuse I'm gonna is show tired them who got that. the juice. DJ Fuse so our bodyguards like, Ch -ch -ch. all right, who else need one? Where they at? We're like, they're at the club, thirty minutes away. DJ Fuse is, DJ Fuse is tired of shock. And his looked at me him. and said, "Greg, he mad." I told you not to wake me up with this bullshit, okay? <laughs> There's no threat right now at the hotel. Uh -oh. Took the guns back and went to sleep. Boom. Pac em embraced his running ground at first, vocally, publicly, on on his songs. Yeah. Some of that you can expect because it's, we were like the top it's group cool. in Oakland it's like at the war, time. And it's like you had Hammer and then Mellow and then Vogue. Music. Too short didn't really happen yet. He was starting to. Too short had started. Yeah, he didn't have him globally yet. You know, Humpty Dance threw us out all into that, a all world. That, all, of, all that all that shit, all that shit came fucking pimping. So being all that all we were so large, you don't expect people can, to play into it a little bit. This is my opportunity. Watching, this is my door. It was beyond that with two boxes. LT went deeper than that. He, we were like family to him. You know, we got him his first apartment. He had no credit. He couldn't drive. He had no driver's license. So we yeah. used to have to work the applications and we were all pitch in and borrow yeah. credit card and co-sign. And we did all the shit we had to do. It we is. tried to teach him how to run his bank account, and how to uh, take care of his place. 
I could tell you stories, man, about how I'd come over Pac's house. My best friend, Smooth, he used to sing all the falsetto shit on Digital Underground. Like, uh, sex packets all around the world say so. That was Smoothie Smooth. He managed an apartment building before we got the group going. Yeah. And we rented Pac, the G apartment in the back. The G apartment. And, uh, I even remember the G apartment. <laughs> I'd come over there. And Pac would be gone out in the street with Richie Rich or somebody, you know. Oh, yeah. Like I said, he was like six years younger than me. When I met Pac, I was like 26. He was like 18 or 19. And uh, he's like seven years younger than me. So my thug that was tragic. side of me was out yeah, of me. You know, this, this I didn't really strap no more. I mean, when I was 19, shout, I was shout just G like him, crazy. His, his you got to prove room, that to yourself room. in this country, you know. April, April you got to know that you can have it. But I was starting to now, choose now, to chill. Now, now, now he's like 50, 58 now. I now was just discovering now he's like 58 now. white chicks and ecstasy and like staying inside. Now, now he's not going out. Still. Lesbians. All kind of cool years. shit. <laughs> Pac was just discovering the streets and camaraderie and manhood. Guns. All you know, bad. sisters. Women. Having them. Because, you know hard to get a black girl in a black neighborhood unless you got something and, going for and you. It it's not like being, a man. Any girl, being, really. Being, being pot, you know, pot, we'll take like, a cute chick on fries. Like, easy but a girl, me. you work at McDonald's? Please. Wesley Snipes said he couldn't buy pussy that, that came, that came from, when he was in college. That came from like, All of a sudden, he got fined once it happened. That came from so like, Pop was discovering easy. sisters. He, he speaks on that. In the first rhyme he ever said, clown around when I hang around with the underground. Folks who used to clown say I'm down when I come around. Gas me when they pass me. They used to diss me and harass me, but now they ask me if they can kiss me. Get some fame, people change. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He was just Same song. starting to feel Same that. People were recognizing him from the Same digital videos lyrics. and from the tours and stuff. And his album was slated to come out soon. Make a note that our label, Tommy Boy, jumped over the Tupac demo to sign gold money, a pimp group. <laughs> but, the, you know, they didn't hear a hit single on the, on the tape. Neither did Tom Wally or Interscope. There really wasn't a hit single on Pac's first album, but Pac was on it. That passion that we know and love him for, that was there. So you really had to listen. You had to meet the man and sit down with the man. And I love Tom Wally for, for seeing Tupac. He That's how we saw him. He sees but we shopped him around. A lot of people he passed over. But he was starting to get the love, starting to feel it. Just I come to his house, grass, and, and Wally all the at, lights would be on. State. He's on the first floor apartment. Drapes wide open. Occasionally a window open with just a screen. And this is in Oakland. Not quite East Oakland. Oh, MacArthur, Lake area. Oh, Still East Oakland. Oh, you know, you don't, you can't leave your shit I, I, open I, I, like that. Win. He's got his digital underground gold records up. Big entertainment center he bought with his first check from the Juice movie. He, he got from uh, that. Too, he got red the, sofas or something. Got he, he, he was on some pimp shit. He had the red velour sofas. Maybe he had black sofas and red bed. I forget. But it yeah. looked lavish up inside Pac's little apartment. It wasn't much different than this. It was just a regular apartment, like six to eight hundred a month or something like that, you know. But uh, <laughs> I would climb through the window, shut some lights off, make sure the doors and windows were locked and climbed out, you know. Then I got tired of that shit. And I was like, Pac, man. I actually, him and Stretch were gone one time. I climbed in and I took all his gold records, all his equipment, and I put it in the bedroom. And I put a note on it. It was me this time. Next time it might not one. be. And it looked like he got robbed. You put a note on that? Oh, you did that? They told me as soon as Pac walked in, he ran back outside and started looking for who did it. Ooh. And they said Stretch just fell out on his knees and said, oh, shit. Who did oh who shit, did Stretch was the one who left who the place over, you know. Like, that was Pac's best friend, by the way. But uh Yeah, so another time I came over and I was like, Pac, for real, man, you're not getting the message. You can't leave your windows wide open with all these gold records and and all your jewelry laying out on the counters and stuff. He was like, he oh, that. I ain't worried well, about that. that. I ain't show you. Oh, when the closet his first AK, everybody. He came out because if someone come up in here. Wait. You saw that? Shot the floor and the sofa all up. 
damn near killed uh, a couple of the outlaws. I had some guns they were little blocks. kids just sitting on the couch getting high. Nine, Not little kids, you know, 17, 18. 18. 18. It was crazy, yeah, man. But he was excited. I always had that boyish that's gleam that, in his eye. That, that, that's all boys that kid got to. Like that's all boys that kid got to. Saw that? Like, this, that part, it's got right? some shit to it. Beautiful. He was always writing. You come in his hotel room, look like a bomb went off. Boom. Blunt scrapers on every counter. Saying. Piss and shit in the toilet. Oh. What's the toilet, Pac? Like, Damn, Pac, don't you flush the toilet? Oh, <laughs> yeah. He didn't even remember that. He didn't flush it because if he was sitting on the toilet writing a rhyme and the phone rang, walking to the other room. Yeah, yeah, oh. what's up? All right, next week? Cool, cool. For sure. Now he's sitting in there, naked. Now somebody knocks on the door. Oh, shit. Throw some underwear on. Go to the door. Ashing the cigarette everywhere. I was all into keeping my apartment all bellied out. It reminded me of the belly apartment. Not that big, but I had the white and the black going and the silver chrome, everything. Oh. And Pac would be in there talking, you know what we should do tomorrow when we come out on stage, right? Yeah, Pac. Pa. Fifteen hundred dollar Persian rug, please, cat, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Damn, I got it, I got it. All right, what was you saying? No, oh, okay, me, you, and Mud, right? After we get off stage, oh, I did it again. <laughs> he just wasn't thinking about that mundane shit. He wasn't thinking about material things. He would wreck his cars so quick. He wrecked every car he had within a couple weeks. You know, the cigarette ashes and leaving the beers and cleaning up, his dishes would be piled up almost to the ceiling. The garbage would be piled up almost to the roof of the refrigerator. Didn't have time for that. He was busy getting it out. When you brought him a beat tape, working man's. Uh, I bet you I don't know this for a fact. That's what Trey and Easy Mobile and other producers, when they play a tape for Pac or send him a CD with beats on it, if you were present, he'd listen to it, but he wouldn't give you an answer until he what? ran and grabbed his rhyme book. Pull his rhyme book out. Everybody got rhyme books. Big pun. Big pun had rhyme book. Biggie Smalls, the Toys B I G had a rhyme book. I want to use that for uh, Soldier Story. Everybody else got rhyme books. It had to fit. If it didn't fit nothing, it's fine. Uh, rappers that no one go, they 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 no one go, planes from the studio straight to the set out of yeah. town straight to the commercial he had to film straight back in the studio straight to those cats studio he promised he'd go by doesn't really want to go over there but he knows how much it means to them <sighs> hardest working man in hip-hop hands down first of all Pac was one of the most virile uh whatever it's called testosterone strong brothers i knew because in digital before same song just from his little parts on stage he would do i don't know if you ever heard a song yeah he's the packer man and then i i have the yeah. nose on going you know well how much are they and Pac was like excuse me trooper will you be needing any packs today yo b don't be pulling on my jacket okay well, he would do the <laughs> just from that little bit of stage and the, and the little hunky dance man, he did man. Pac was pulling them. Girls love Pac from day one. I'm not even oh, no, talking about whatever I'm talking about. Multiply times ten when he became a star. I'm talking about his of, natural uh, but magnetism. I watched that movie once. Was beyond celebrity status because here I was, Humpty Hunt, Shock G, whoever. MTV all day, Chevy every day. Chase, Kiss you back. Uh, I get around. Uh, not I get around. Kiss you back. What? Same song. Movie, Humpty uh, Dance. Chase, we were well out there. Uh, Pac still had the numbers. Digital, digital underground if we had a context, movie, Pac yeah. had the numbers. As soon as we showed up, nothing but trouble movie. He would not but trouble knock movie. one down in the dressing room before we even did sound check. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I just hit that. Uh, <laughs> you know, for real? Where's you just now in the dressing room, nigga? And then we leave sound check to go check into the hotel. He'd have a girl in the back of the bus. And then, <laughs> you know, 
then later on after the show, forget about it. <laughs> but that, that's like, I'm trying, I'm trying he's not even known. Video. He's not a, says every day a celebrity yet. We haven't even done stop. the show yet. After the show, it's real easy to get chicks. They're just throwing themselves at you. The energy of the whole thing has everybody on a high. Including, what is the fucking stop? Including the managers, the establishment Shit. owners, the audience. When a show goes down, everybody's on this communion vibe and a lot of sex jumps off. Early that day see, when we see, rolled see, in the town, fucking just, it, 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 it just, it just, it, you know, it, 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 it just like I said, is two, three, three, like this. before that's the show that's why took I place. Then after the news, show, focus on watching the sports. to the lobby. Fuck the news. Him upstairs. If he was in the mood, if there was no hip hoppers around. Now, if there was some MCs around that he that he liked, I remember when we showed up in New York, he, they yeah, talk about track, track and the tropics and all track and tropics and all this bullshit. Greg Nice to see smooth or, you know, just whoever. Been tracked a long Anybody time that ago. was really about it, he thought he could learn from. But it is truly absurd to I, think I just hope that they won't be doing too much of this shit on the house. They'll be having to go on Saturday. Has to rape anybody. I ain't, I ain't had no time to do. I ain't, I ain't had no time to do. Um, I ain't had no time to play Shock G's video from Vivo and walk on some copyright claims. Going back to Shock, Shock G's story. Well, let me go continue with with with, with, uh, with uh with the story of uh of uh of shock of shock G. Let me go read this because he the fucking the fucking rain is just is bonkers. The fucking rainy the fucking forecast is bonkers right now. Crazy right now. They rain like this every fucking day, Joe. It's like it's like my, my mother nature's going crazy right now. You know what I mean? You should you should just let that she should send that weather she should let that weather get sent straight back to to uh, Puerto Rico or whatever. Fuck. I mean, no sense for it to be to be in the state. It's rainy weather to be in the state. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's, there's fucking uh, dark clouds and rainy weather still stuck. I'm gonna get had to do my reading. Let me go. Let me go do some more of this. Let me do this. Unsung type story storybook reading. Okay, soon after relocating to Oakland, California, Shock G formed Digital Digital Underground. Long with long with oh yeah, Chop Master J and the uh the late Kenneth. Kenny K. Uh, Waters. After around 15 months of unsuccessful ne negotiations with various small record companies in 1988, the trio finally released a 12 inch single, a 12 inch single on McCall Records. McCall Records. It features or featured or featured. Quote unquote, your life, your life's a cartoon. As a, as the uh, was it the A side. 
and underwater rhymes and as the b-side as the b-side that's quote unquote underwater rhymes as the b-side both songs were were penned produced produced and performed by jacobs who also sketched the cartoonish cover illustrations illustrations the record including the logo for digital underground's startup label tnt as well as mccullough's logo tnt was also founded by oh yeah tupac shakur's management tupac shakur's management uh, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, Atron Gregory. In 1989, the group signed with Tommy Boy Records, Tommy Boy Records, and released Do What You Like, quote unquote, Do What You Like. Let me, let me, let me see, let me, let me, let me go uh, rephrase. Do what uh you like yeah, yeah sound of woman ooing and iron what we're doing that what's what the woman doing that ooing? uh receiving minimal radio radio airplay but became an underground hit an underground hit that's what it went underground like you call it uh it's video was more successful reaching number 40 on mtv's top 100 videos of the year quote unquote do what you like paved the way for digital underground's debut album sex packets sex packets and the uh, highest charting song of their career the humpty dance quote unquote the Humpty Dance. Both released in early 1990 and both achieving platinum sales certifications by the RIAA. The latter was wrapped by Humpty Hump, the most flamboyant of Shock Shock G's several alter egos. By that time, Digital Underground had expanded significantly with with DJ Fuse, Money B, and Shmooby Shmoo joining the group, and with with a uh, Ramon P. Wee Gooden. He might be the he might be the homie producer, and Tupac Shakur joining by 1991, but he joined them in like. He joined him in 89. We gotta go to other identities. Throughout Shock G's rapping career, he created several aliases resulting in characters that were maintained in such reality. They were believed to be separate people by music fans, some music fans, even a few industry insiders, as Rackadelic he illustrated album covers and provided art direction. As the piano man, he contributed keyboard tricks and music production. His main persona, Shock, Shock G, utilized a more natural voice to it, while he altered his voice to become, to become the Humpty Hump character, an iconic character with an exaggerated buffoon persona, colorful clothes, and a groucho glasses and nose disguise. He used a nasal voice for the character Humpty. At public and most public appearances, Jacobs would show up. Jacobs would show up as one person or the other, but at live shows and video shoots, he would use a stand-in or camera tricks to maintain the illusion. A fictional, a fictional biography was constructed for Humpty. The story that being being that that uh oh yeah. 
<laughs> Edward Ellington Humphrey III. Edward Ellington Humphrey III, the former lead singer of Smooth Eddie and the Humpers, had become a rapper after burning his nose in a kitchen accident with a deep fryer. The story was even told by the late legendary Casey Kasem himself. On his, on his then countdown show, Casey's Top 40, Jacobs also sometimes performed as other characters, including MC Blowfish, IC Mike, The Computer Woman, Butterfly, and Peanut Hakeem. Shock G's TV appearance includes 1992 was Showtime at the Apollo, Showtime at the Apollo in Harlem, New York. That was already, used, it used to be on WNOL TV at the time. It was like back in 89. And several, several, what is this? Several, let's say several, the Arsenio Hall show performances. Performances between 1990 and 1994 1994, yes, 1990 and 1994, and several live MTV performances, including MTV Spring Break 1990 in Daytona Beach, Florida. Yo MTV Raps. And guess who's guess who's performing performing live on Yo MTV Raps? Ed Lubber, Ed Lubber, and Dr. Dre. In 1991. Club MTV, I think it's with, I think it's with, uh, yes, the legendary downtown Julie Brown, the, the VJ. In 1992, uh, in MTV Jams in, in 1994, most of these consisted of music performances with either Digital Underground or Tupac. However, on an episode of the 1991 sitcom Drexel's Class, Jacobs played played a small acting role as a furnace as a furnace repairman. Within the show story, the title character Otis Drexel insists that the furnace repairman looks like exactly like Humpty Hump. But neither he nor his co-worker, portrayed by Jason Priestley, yes, Jason Priestley, have heard any of such hip hop artists, especially especially not, not one with such a ridiculous name. The episode ends with a live performance of Digital Digital Underground's No Nose Job on a cruise ship full of Sports Illustrated swimsuit models, which is presented as a scene from one of Mr. Drexel's dreams, Mr. Drexel's dreams, where Digital Underground's band members, Jacobs appeared in the Dan Aykroyd directed comedy film Nothing But Trouble in 1991. In 1991, appearing as both Shock G and Humpty Hump, the group, including Tupac Shakur, makes a cameo music performance. A cameo music performance. As well as play a small character role in the film, in the film as themselves, as themselves. Since then, Jacobs has appeared in a handful handful of music documentaries, including including Thug Angel, Life of an Outlaw. That's been out like 2002. Let's see about 2000. I don't know what it says. But I got they got out in 2002. I put 2000 on there. About 
Tupac Shakur and Parliament Funkadelic. One Nation Under a Group. What was it 1996? I don't even know. They were they were they, they already done a documentary. See, they already did a documentary based on them, which somebody else named Dwayne Robinson commented on my video regarding my video based on the Parliament Funkadelic One Nation Under a Groove documentary. And then he said these these wrote, wrote a bunch of shit on there. And then they, then they wrote promo some. Uh, okay, about George Clinton and P and P Funk, P Funk. Both of which which received heavy TV rotation, and both of which relied heavily on Jacobs's commentary. On June twenty fourth, two thousand eleven, Shock G was featured. Shock G was featured in a on an episode of the podcast. Oh yeah, you had to be there. Quote unquote, you had to be there. With with the comedians that that uh, they're coming up, the up and coming comedians, they're, they're the names of uh. Nikki Glaser and Sarah Schaefer. Okay. In addition to his work with Digital Underground, Shock G found moderate success as a solo artist and music producer. In 1993, Shock G produced Tupac Shakur's breakthrough platinum single, I Get Around, as well as guest starred on the single and music video. And went on to produce produce Tupac's So Many Tears from his multi-platinum album, 1995 album Me Against the World. Tupac's first published work was while still a member of Digital Underground. Yes, while still a member of Digital Underground, when he appeared on the 1991 song and video, same song, same song which also appeared in the Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd, and Demi Moore film, Nothing But Trouble. Nothing But Trouble. Shock co-produced Tupac's debut album, Tupac Clips Now, Shock G. Pierce producer, and guest artist on fellow Oakland-based rap group, rap group, The Loonies, made of uh, Numb Skull and Yuck Mouth. Looney's platinum album, uh, debut album released was a uh, little is their, their debut platinum, their platinum debut release. Okay, Looney's the Looney's uh, platinum debut release, Operation, yeah, Operation Stacola in 1995. Also appearing as a guest MC in the uh, oh, yeah, quote unquote, I got five on it. Bay Ballers remix and video. In 1996, the Wayans Brothers film, the film uh, Sean and Mon, Sean Mullen had probably uh, appeared on, uh, Sean Mullen Wayans, their film Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking juice in, in the hood. Featured the Shock G song, We Got More. The song which featured Oakland rappers Loonies was used for three different scenes in the film. And is featured in two different places on the soundtrack, making it the only song to appear twice on the soundtrack. In 1998, 1998 Prince, there's copyright claim regarding, regarding that can we at all that at, at weekend funk song 
So it, it hit, hit a YouTube slide in face with copyright claim regarding the Weekend Funk song that Prince did with George Clinton. But I raised the copyright claim notes of my uh, messages thing on Gmail. So no one will read that again because they, 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 they try to threaten niggas with copyright. They threaten motherfuckers with copyright claim. So fuck them. Included the uh yeah Prince included the shock the shock G produced love sign on his triple C D crystal ball album. Shock G has toured and performed on stage with, with George Clinton, with George Clinton and P Funk, including a guest performance with with Clinton at Woodstock. 1999. Well, it's the West stage. All right, I've already done a video on that regarding the 23rd anniversary of that Woodstock West stage show. I've already done a, a live show based on that. Uh, previous July. Oh, look at this. We're going to 2003. Uh, in 2003, uh, and that's 19 years later, Shock G, Shock G produced the single Risky Business for a Los Angeles underground artist, Mervs, and also appeared in the video as himself and as Humpty Hump. Mervs performed, performed this song alive with Shock G with Shock G at the Paid Dues Festival and also featured him as his stage DJ slash music conductor on a two-month extensive Definitive Jux label. Was it Jukes label? Jukes label? It was in Canada, Canada tour on January 29th. Oh, no, I forgot to forgot. I've got yeah, I used the word uh, wrong, wrong, wrong number. On January twentieth, two thousand nine, Shock Shock G's single "Cherry Flavored Email." Cherry flavored email, yeah, or it's, or it's cherry flavored or cherry cherry flavored email, was renamed and released as a uh, special edition called Cherry Flavored Election to commemorate the inauguration of one of the, uh, yeah, it was the inauguration of ex-U.S. President Barack Hussein Obama. We're going to, and then, and then tragedy struck. On April twenty second, two thousand twenty one. That's what we're doing. That's what that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the tragedy. My cousin told me this last well, shot. G's death. <sighs> Fuck. It's tragic. It's tragic when you, when you, when you, when you die in the hotel room, man. It's drugs in the system. Man. On April 22nd, 2021, Shock G was found dead in a, in a hotel room in Tampa, Florida. Yes, Shock G was found dead in a hotel room in Tampa, Florida on April 22nd, 2021, at the age of 57 years old. On June 10th, 2021, the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner announced that Shock G's death was caused by an accidental overdose of fentanyl, methamphetamine, and ethanol that that's that's leads that leaves out alcohol. Alcohol.
man history man gives you everything to uh to think about i'm not gonna go out to vivo because if i go to vivo they might slap people with copyright strikes but i got go i got a better idea i'm gonna go to vivo and go to uh vivo and work on on that That's Tommy Boy, and I'm gonna go to Tommy Boy. I got fun. I got fun with Vivo is at. I got fun with Vivo had had the video because I don't want to get slapped. Yes, I found something. Vivo. I'm gonna take us home. I'm gonna take us home, bros. This is there's no underground. The Humpty Dance from the Sex Packets album in 1990. Let's go. Oliver? Cousin Evie. My mom always wanted to take me to England. There's a wedding coming up. You should come. style that you used to i look funny but yo i'm making money see so yo world i hope you're ready for me now gather round i'm the new fool in town and my sound's laid down by the underground i'm drinking a bottle of hennessy you got on your shelf so just let me introduce myself my name is humpty pronounced with the humpty yo ladies oh how i like to funk thee and all the rappers in the top 10 please allow me to bump me i'm stepping tall y'all and just like humpty dumpty you're gonna fall when the stereos pump me i like to rhyme i like my beats funky i'm spunky i like my oatmeal lumpy i'm sick with this straight gangsta mac but sometimes i get ridiculous i'll eat up all your crackers and your licorice oh yo fat girl come here are you ticklish yeah i call you fat look at me i'm skinny it never stopped me from getting busy i'm a freak i like the girls with the boom i once got busy in a bathroom i'm crazy allow me to amaze me they say i'm ugly but it just don't faze me i'm still getting in the geek beats and i even got my own dance the dance is the That's all right, cause I get things cooking. You stare, you glare, you constantly try to compare me. But you can't get near me. I'm giving more C and on the floor B, all the girls they adore me. Oh yes, ladies, I'm really being sincere, cause in the I'm a humpty nose will tickle you. I know it's big. Uh-uh, I'm not ashamed. Big like a pickle. I'm still getting paid. I get by the ladies, you know I'm in charge. Both how I'm living and my nose is large. I get stupid. I shoot an arrow like Cupid. I use a word that don't mean nothing. Like lifted. I sang on do what you like. And if you missed it, I'm the one who said just grab them in the biscuit. Also told you that I like to bite. Well, yeah, I guess it's obvious. I also like to write. All you have to do is give Humpty a chance. And now I'm gonna do my dance. Uh, humpty. Dance is a chance to build a hop. Come on, yeah, sexy baby. Do the hump. Come on, uh, I'll do the hump. Sexy baby. Everybody, come on and do the hump. Uh, I'll do the hump. We're doing, we're doing the hump. Yeah, I'll do the hump. Watch me do the hump. Ah, yeah, that's a good break, y'all. Look at that bass groove right here. Ah, yeah. Now that I told y'all a little bit about myself, let me tell you a little bit about this dance. 
It's real easy to do. Check it out. First I lift to the side like my legs was broken. Shaking and twitching on like I was smoking. Crazy whack funky. People say you look like MC Hammer on crack, club D. That's all right, cause my body's in motion. It's supposed to look like a fit or a convention. Anyone can play this game. This is my dance, y'all. Humpty Hump's my name. No two people will do it the same. You got it down when you appear to be in pain. Humping, funking, jumping, dig around, shaking your rump. And when the doo-doo jump punk points a finger like a stunt, tell them step off. I'm doing my hump. The Humpty Dance is your chance to do my hump. Before I go, that's why I have to dedicate this to Shot G. I'm only do this just for rappers that they know they know the words anymore. Rest in peace to Gregory Edward Jacobs, also known as Shock G. Born on August 20, 25th, 19... Wow, I forgot about this one. Born on August 25th, 1963. Died on April 22nd, 2021. See you, uh, see you in early September. What what uh, what a bill I had I, I had to uh that that uh I had to do based on uh, a documentary based on George Clinton. Peace.